Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to calculate the bound length and dissociation energy of hydrogen molecule using VASP. And um, there are th basically three steps. The first one is as usual to do a relaxation of the hydrogen molecule structure and then do a single point energy calculation of hydrogen molecule uh, with no spin polarization. And the third step is to calculate the energy of a hydrogen atom. And in this case, we need to set I spin equals two, which means that it's a spin polarized case. The reason is that for a hydrogen atom, it has unpaired spin. And then we will compare them with the um, literature values that I show here the bound length and dissociation energy. And the definition of dissociation energy is the two times the energy of the hydrogen atom minus the energy of the hydrogen molecule. Yeah. And then optionally, I will also calculate the spin polarized calculation for hydrogen molecule and spin unpolarized calculation for hydrogen atom to compare the results with the um, uh, step two and step three. And then we'll see that for hydrogen molecule, there is no difference because in the end, uh, there is no spin magnetization, but for hydrogen atom, there is a difference, which I will show you later. Okay, and then we can start the calculation. We go to the terminal, and then this is the, uh, maybe I'll first show you the in-car files. Those are the input files for the relaxation process. And as usual, there are four input files, in-car, post-car, k-points, and port-car. In-car contains the parameters of the calculation, k-points contains the k-points, and postcard contains the positions of the atoms, and postcard contains the pseudopotential file. Okay, so let's first take a look at the in-car. And I like to uh, structure the in-car with different categories of comments. So uh, first thing is the initialization. We set i start equals zero, which means that there, it starts with a new wave function. And I charge equals two means that we start from a new charge. So it means that it's a new calculation. And the system name is hydrogen molecule. You can set whatever you want. And then we have the parameters for the electronic optimization. And this is the EN cut, which you should find in the port car. Yeah, I can show you here. In the port car, you can find it here, EN max. Yeah. Usually I will take one to 1.3 times EN max as EN cut here. So now we take 300 and I smear equals zero means that it is a Gaussian smearing and sigma equals 0 0.1 means that the smearing is 0, 0 0.1 and this is usually a default setting. And then we have the parameters for ionic relaxation and I brewing equals two means that we use the CG algorithm to um, move the atoms and this is also the default. If you don't know anything else, please just use this. And ISIF equals two, uh, you will find a chart of all of the different ISIFs in VASP wiki. And ISIF equals two means that you only relax the atoms. And ISIF equals three means that you relax the atoms and the cell. NSW means that the maximum number of ionic steps are 50. If your system does not converge within 50 ionic steps, you can increase that. And ADFG is the convergence criterion for the ionic relaxation. And if it is positive, it is energy criteria. If, if it is negative, as is shown here, it is the force criteria. And usually you can set it to minus 0 0.05, minus 0 0.02, or minus 0 0.01, something like that. Okay, and this is the in-car. And for the positions of the atoms, you can see here, because we need to calculate the molecule, we put the molecule inside a box, and this is a large box. And this means we have two atoms in a unit cell, and this is Cartesian coordinate in the unit of Anstrom. And we have two coordinates for the atoms. So the first atom we put at 0, 0, 0, and the second atom we put at 0, 0, 0 0.74. And we know that it is the bound length is more or less 0 0.74 angstrom. OK. So for the k-points, because we do a molecule in the box calculation, we only need one k-point. That is the gamma point calculation. So here it means that we are doing gamma point calculation. 111 means that we only need one k point and there is no shift in the k points. And the port car is just of PBE type of hydrogen that you can get from the standard distribution. Okay. And now we can go to the calculation to let it run. Wasp. 
In this case, we can actually use VASP gamma, but le let's just be consistent, use VASP STD. If you use VASP gamma, it will be actually more efficient and take less time. So now the job is finished. See that there are a lot of output files and the important thing is the out car and count car here. So if you go to the count car, it is the relaxed structure. And then we copy the count car here to the next folder, paste, and then uh, we change the name of count car to post car. So which means that we used the relaxed structure uh, as the input position for the energy calculation. And we do this for all of the calculations afterwards. Okay, and then we go to the second uh, calculation, which is the calculation of the hydrogen molecule without spin. And basically it's quite similar as, in, as is in the relaxation, except that we change the ionic relaxation so that an SW equals zero, so that there's no ionic movement and also I burn equals minus one, which means that there is no ionic update. K points and port car remains the same and postcard we took from the count card that we had in the relaxation calculation. Okay, and now we can do the calculation again. And the calculation is finished. And for the energy, actually we can get from the Aussie car here, the last line. Or if you want to go to more details, you can go to out car and scroll down to the bottom and a little bit up you should use this value here. And in principle, this is actually the same as this one here eh? and also should be uh, quite similar as this one. Okay, so we used uh, the value here, copy, and we paste into our chart here. And this is the no spin calculation for hydrogen molecule. And then we want to do a second step of the spin polarized calculation for a hydrogen atom. And for this, of course, we need to change the in car. Uh, most of the things stays the same, except that we increase the maximum steps for the electronic optimization, because probably this spin polarized calculation would cost more steps. Of course, we don't want to relax anything. And then we need to set I spin equals two to uh, start the spin polarized calculation. Yeah, okay. And the K points is the same. We just keep it as gamma point calculation. Podcar remains the same because it is only the hydrogen element. The postcar is of course different because now we only have one hydrogen atom. So there is only one atom here. The box we choose to be the same because we want to compare the energy. And in Cartesian coordinate, the hydrogen atom is placed at zero, zero, zero position. Okay. And then we can do the spin polarized calculation and we go to the folder and uh, execute the VASP program. And now it's finished. Let's take a look at the output files and let's go to Aussie car. And you see that this is the magnetization is one. So there's one Bohr magneton, which means that there is only one unpaired electron, which is as expected. Okay. And then for the energy, we go to the out car and scroll down to the bottom and we take this value here. Yeah. And sorry, I forgot to put the value of the bound length in the relaxation calculation. And we can actually see in the count car here. Now you see that it's in the unit of direct. So we have, have to actually calculate that. So we copy this here. And let's say this is the first one, and then the second one minus, so there are two minus, so it's a plus sign here. And then multiplied by actually 15 here. Yeah. So this is the calculation. Let's move it here. Okay, and you see that the error is just 1%. And also we have already calculated the dissociation energy here. 
because it's just two times in this value minus in this value and then we calculate here and we see that the dissociation energy is also well predicted and the error is within one percent and this is very nice so probably you will have a question what if if we do a non-spin polarized calculation for hydrogen atom or a spin polarized calculation for a hydrogen molecule does that make sense okay then i will show you the calculation of those two yeah we go to the uh, this one this is the non-spin polarized calculation for hydrogen and the only thing that it differs from the spin polarized calculation is that we remove the i spin equals two so by default it is a spin unpolarized calculation so we go to this one and we do the calculation and this should be much faster than the spin polarized calculation and you see now it's finished we go to the out car and try to find the energy here and all of the energy is in the unit of electron volt so we copy and paste it here and you see that after turning on the spin polarization the energy actually decreases and this is because we allow for the spin degree of freedom so it lowered the total energy and actually this is necessary because for a hydrogen atom there is unpaired electrons so we have to switch on the spin polarization okay and then we can do the calculation for the hydrogen molecule with spin polarized calculation here and the only thing that it differs from the spin non-polarized calcula calculation of hydrogen molecule is that we add i spin equals 2 here to turn on the spin polarized calculation so we go there and we do the VASP calculation here now the calculation is finished you see that this is actually much slower than the spin on polarized calculation and what you can see here is that the magnetization is actually zero and this is good because hydrogen molecule should not have any magnetization okay we go to the out car and just scroll down find the energy here copy and paste here and here you see that the spin polarized calculation and spin unpolarized calculation is actually the same and uh, the reason is very simple because hydrogen molecule does not have any unpaired spin okay so uh, in this video i've shown you how to calculate the bound length using VASP and also how to calculate the dissociation energy and we compare them to the literature they are very consistent within around one percent error and i also showed you what is the difference of spin polarized calculation and spin unpolarized calculation by setting i spin equals two for a non-magnetic system like hydrogen molecule there's no difference for a, a system that has unpaired spin it makes a difference that if you switch on the spin polarization you probably the energy will be lowered okay so that's all for today if you learn something from my video i appreciate your like or subscribe to my channel and i hope to see you next time